been trying to get a little more organized in the barn, and one thing I've really been missing is a rack that I can store all my metal and wood on. I bought some 4 inch by 8 inch H beam, which would be the main structure of the cantilevered rack design I was picturing. The hardest part of this project was going to be moving around and working with all this heavy material. I aimed to have the forklift do as much of the heavy lifting as possible, but I knew there's still going to be a lot of grunt work along the way. The back of the barn where the rack is going to go is just a mess. I have piles of wood, metal, and other odds and ends stacked up everywhere, which makes it a real pain to find something in particular, or to check what I actually have there. I thought a floor to ceiling rack could store everything back here and maybe even have room to spare. Metal comes in 20 foot lengths, so it needs to accommodate that, and I didn't want to have to slide all the metal in and out from the side, which is why I wanted to make it a cantilever design. I also wanted to be able to store 4x8 sheets of metal and plywood on it, so it needed to be at least 4 foot wide. It's going to have to be quite a bit more beefy to be cantilevered and still capable of holding a lot of weight but I typically overbuild things anyways, so I was hoping I was up for the challenge. So, priority number two on this project is to build a strong cantilevered pallet rack. Priority number one was to not drop a heavy H-beam on my foot. I cut all the brackets out of 3 8 inch plate, which seemingly cut like butter coming off my previous project with the dumbbells and all the half inch plate. The H beam was just a little too tall to fit under the gantry, but I thought I could make it work if I dropped the water table off, which was a little nerve wracking. I was extra careful and didn't spill a drop, especially not on my plasma cutter right underneath it. The gantry was just a quarter inch too short still, so I stuck a spacer in, which did the trick. I was really excited this might work. It would have been a ton of drilling if it didn't. I was originally planning on clamping down a piece of metal as a guide for a quick orientation of the subsequent H-beams. But I found out there was a little variation in widths and heights of each piece, and I just had to manually orient each one. I also had to run two programs, one for the top and one for the bottom, since the beam is a couple feet longer than my CNC table is, and I would reposition the beam in between. I had four holes to cut in the side of each beam for the cross bracing, and for this I was able to set up a guide. I caught the plywood on fire three or four times. I usually have a strict policy against tacking things to the welding table because I think it's hard to keep it flat over time, but I broke my policy on this occasion so I could use the 90 off the edge of the table for welding the beams together. I figured even if the edge of the table wasn't perfectly square, at least it'd all be the same. I 
I took the rust off each piece and then bolted the bracket in place at the bottom. Switching over to the arms that bolt onto the H-beam, I again broke my no tacking to the welding table roll and set up a jig that would hold the brackets and arms perpendicular to each other while I welded them. I'm still not exactly sure what the best setup for the rack would be, so I made six extra arms while I was at it to give myself some more options down the road. Next, I need to cut some end caps for the arms. But before I do that, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like you and me. Skillshare helps you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Quite a few years ago when I first started trying to get my head around all the different software in the Adobe suite, I'd watch hours of tutorials while driving the bean picker on the farm in the summer. It's probably not recommended to watch Skillshare while operating heavy machinery, but I'll leave that up to you. Kelly has really enjoyed all the art classes Skillshare has to offer and has been a longtime Skillshare user as well. One thing that's really important for me is all the hands-on projects Skillshare has to offer. I learn so much faster through hands-on. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Skillshare has been a longtime supporter of this channel. I hope you'll check them out and I thank them for their support. I wasn't sure if I would want tabs on the outside of the arms. It seems like most of the time they would just get in the way, but they might be nice for round stuff that could roll off. I decided to weld nuts on the inside of the end caps that I could bolt tabs to later on, if I felt like it needed it. With all the arms done, the last thing to weld on is the cross bracing between the vertical beams. 
I clamped down two beams square to the table and bolted on the brackets on the inside. I welded in the horizontal tubing to the top and bottom. Then I used two inch by a quarter inch strips to make the cross of the cross bracing. Once it was all welded, I unbolted it and slitted out the end so I could make four more. Again, even if everything is not exact, at least it'll all be the same and should work. It's time to do a test fit and see if everything would bolt together. I was going to have to break it all down again for paint, but I needed to make sure it went together okay first. It's a little more awkward than I was picturing putting the first two sections together. I really didn't trust them to stand upright on their own. But once the first two sections were bolted together, the others followed a lot easier. Everything was going together great, so I hauled it up to our farm shop to get a coat of primer and paint. While the paint was drying, I started in on cleaning up the back area of the barn, which I had been dreading. I had to trim up a little bit of the framing where it hung down low and would interfere with the rack. The barn had been expanded onto at one point and this used to be the north wall. I also had to knock out a bit of concrete. My mom stopped by to check up on the progress and ended up helping out the whole evening, which was pretty amazing. So a huge shout out to my mom. I said I had better take the time to insulate and hang some plywood behind the metal rack, since it's going to be so much harder to do later on. I'd probably have to take the whole rack down again to have access to the wall behind it.
and then it was time to set the rack up again. This time it was much easier having another set of hands. Mom's a trooper. I don't know if she fully realized what she signed up for. Thanks so much. Yep. It's time for a hot bath. <laughs> Attached all the arms and cut some two by sixes to fill in one section to hold short lengths of metal. The last thing to do was to start stacking wood and metal back onto it. 